jumped in the car this morning to head back to that BRB job, um, and it is not looking positive today. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, those clouds ahead are pretty dark. It looks like it was raining a fair chunk of the night as well, so hopefully the umbrella held up. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this done today. I'll, I'll, I'll try, um, but yeah, in the end, I'm not gonna work on electricity in the rain, so. Yeah, it's a garbage day. <laughs> Awesome. So I just chucked on my um, back stat. It's about down to about 350 at the moment. Again, I mean, this rain's coming in pretty hard now. So for the time being, I am not getting this board done. So it's the following day. Obviously, yesterday I wasn't going to be able to get that board done. Um, so yeah, left it on back overnight again. Still running, we'll um, get the covers off, jump in, see what our back's down to now. Um, then the plan is I'll de-energize it, replace the board, put it back together, charge it up, and we'll get this thing going. Awesome, so back's down to about 203. I haven't closed this off yet, so it's kind of reading from here, but I will. Um, I'll keep this thing running, even once I've de-energized it. I mean, may as well, it's not gonna hurt. Um, but yeah, really happy with that. Sweet, so all I needed to take it out of vac mode was basically just hit BS1. Um, now we'll de-energize and change this board. Sweet. I'll, um, I'll let this thing rest for about 10 minutes just to let those capacitors discharge and all that before we start pulling this apart. So that's basically just two screws down the bottom and it latches up the top there. You can kind of just drop that down, have to take out the um, these two looms here, but that's our inverter board that we're changing there. So this board I'm replacing is actually an upgrade. So any model pre-2014 for the VRV3s, they'll send you like an upgrade kit essentially. Um, so it comes with a whole bunch of different looms uh, and there's a sheet somewhere as well that kind of tells me how to rewire it, apparently some of the, the, the names and stuff are different or whatever. So anyway, we'll jump into that. Here's the old one. And the new one. So you can kind of see just some small differences, I guess. Okay, I've kind of put it all back together. Um, yeah, so that, that's all screwed in now. I've got the um, new, um, oh my God, Sun Peter run to the, the compressor, put that on. I'm just trying to find where I put that actually, but anyway, time to turn power on and we will, yeah, hopefully nothing blows up, eh? Cool, power on and we'll just let it do its loading process. Awesome, we're looking all good. Uh, those aren't flashing, they're actually, oh, there you go, they're solid. I've just chucked it back into vacuum mode as well. So one, just to see if it would do it, obviously to make sure that the bulb is working correctly. Um, not that the inverter board is responsible for that. Anyway, um, but yeah, heard all the valves open. We'll leave this on back for a little bit longer and then we'll start charging it up. I've just closed off my valves here and we'll um, we'll do a decay test now. Um, decay test looking really good. Now comes the issue with the charge, right? So I haven't mentioned it up until this point because I haven't, I've been a little confused as to what exactly is going on here. So I pulled out about 35 kilos, right? now. I've got a whole bunch of different numbers on the back here, none of which work, like none of which uh, come to the same total that I get when I put the liquid pipe lengths into the Dakin app. So according to that app and these pipe lengths here, I am supposed to add like 15.3 kilos on top of the 11.7 um, that each of these outdoors has, right? But as you can see, this number here obviously doesn't equal this. I don't know what this is. Um, this number plus whatever, the, like the equivalent number over here. So this is an REM, but these are like, they're obviously heat recoveries anyway. So 3.6. So none of that equals the numbers that I've got here. It's it's really confusing actually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the liquid the liquid lengths I have. I put that data into the Dakin app. That tells me I need an extra 15.3 on top of the base charge of each unit. And that's what I'm gonna do. So what I'm thinking I'll do is I've closed off my suction port here and I'm gonna force it down the dual gas line. Basically, I'm just trying to force it the long way around before it comes back to the compressor. 
Um, I don't know if that's going to make a difference, to be honest with you, but I'm, I'm hoping it will. Um, but anyway, we'll take this out of... Yeah, you can hear all the valves close there. Let's uh, purge my lines and we'll get this thing charging. And we're charging away. I think my plan's working. I'm slowly starting to see my suction pressure rise. Um, yeah, so must be sending it the long way around. Awesome. Almost through the first bottle. That is our oh, second bottle down. So we've got about to 8.8 .8 out of the third bottle before um, it really started to, it's just stopped basically. So what I might do now is we'll run this thing through a test mode um, and I can charge the rest up uh, or maybe even force cooling. Yeah, we'll think about it. Anyway, I've got to open up these. I'm just going to do it slowly though. Um, just obviously not to jam the compressor filled with liquid. I've um, I tried to improvise a bit here with the, because uh, obviously this was all broken. So there you go. So to go into test mode, they've got that BS4 button there. It says test. Oops. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Beautiful. Just heard the compressor start. And the other ones as well. You hear the inverter ramping up now. It's always a good sign. So these things are still running through their test mode. Um, so while that's happening, I'm kind of just trying to do a bit of a clean up. Um, get rid of the bottles. test mode looks like everything's sweet so what I'm gonna do now is go down and get the service tool we'll plug in um, and get yeah get the remaining charge in just connecting to the system now and um, what I'm gonna do is get the rest of the gas in this system um, and then we will get it to run on its own accord once all the gas is obviously in and I'll monitor the data, I'll start recording because I want to basically record all the data and then we can, um, yeah, wanna, uh, basically have a look at it and see if we can see any like standout issues. If not, then I can just take the data away and kind of go over it as well. Um, but yeah, once I've, once I've got the gas in there and it's running on its own accord, I am going to go something to eat. Uh, that's not the system we're looking for. From memory, I think it's system two. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's this system here. Okay, up and monitoring. Um, I've gone and put this thing into uh, additional refrigerant mode, so we'll add it that way. Um, that's not gonna help. And we'll wait for those compressors to start. Beautiful, and here we go. Um, obviously you'll notice <laughs> Both of my uh, both sides of my gauge is going down. That's because in cooling mode, I'll put up a schematic. But in cooling mode, that the the dual gas pipe and the suction lighter are obviously both cold. So um, I'll change that around once I'm actually testing. Um, actually, I might not even need to do that to be honest, because I got the computer um, which has gone blank. Oh, you bastard! But that's right. We'll just focus on getting this done first. Just looked up the last bottle now, and I got eight kilos to go. So close. <laughs> it's a long process. So I just looked at the radar. It looks like we're we're getting a little bit of rain coming my way. So what I'm going to do 
I'm almost done with this. I'll take it out of refrigerant, uh, extra refrigerant mode and I will take all of this stuff downstairs because you can plug in, I'll go plug into an indoor unit and I'll be able to monitor from down there. So put the new, I'll put the new shredder cores in now. I've still got to find some insulation for that. Um, and there's a couple of little things I want to test up here. Um, but yeah, like I said, it is starting to rain. So get these things on. I'll go put it on downstairs. We'll plug in the tool and then um, monitor the weather. And when it does clear up a bit, we'll come back up here and do my tests. just starting to ramp up now um, I'm gonna let this monitor for a bit I'm recording the data as well um, but I'm gonna let this um, start cycling by itself while I go pack up some of the tools at the top so just looking at my indoor data here and I mean most of it is looking really good um, At the moment, I'm not seeing anything that's jumping out at me. Looks like there's still a fair bit of rain over that way. Um, I'm pretty much almost done. These things are running by themselves. Just got uh, one quick check I wanna do. So based off the data I was seeing, nothing immediately stood out. Now, I'm not good enough to you know, be able to look at the data for 20 minutes and be like, oh, okay, this is the exact problem. So I'm gonna go home and have a look at that as well. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna film that um, but trying to work out exactly why this compressor failed. Um, the ch I was doing a quick check just before, oh, put the power up, no, hold on one sec. I was, um, I was talking to someone <coughs> who uh, works on these a fair bit and they were talking about uh, a thing to check or just common issues for why these things can fail is um, basically you've obviously got your oil separator at the back that will then come up and feed oil into your suction line to obviously to, to get oil back into your compressor. Um, just to make sure that that was, that was warm. Um, it was warm before. Uh, this one, so they don't feed each, they don't feed themselves, they actually feed from another compressor, right? So this line here is currently warm because that's getting fed from the com inverter compressor, which is the only one that's running. Um, and so this one, the inverter compressor actually gets fed from the standard, which obviously isn't running at the moment. So that's why that's cold. It was warm just before. That was basically the only check I was doing. Um, but as it stands, it's working really nicely. All the rooms are getting up to temp and looking pretty good. What I'm going to do, like I said, I'm gonna go home and, and kind of analyze that data a bit more, because like I said, I still need to like reference diagrams and all that kind of stuff to work out exactly what it is I'm looking at. If anything pops up, um, I will, I might make like a short video or something like that explaining what I found, but as it stands, it is, it is working really nicely. Um, I do not know where the hell I put that. I thought I put it in the unit, I must not have, and it's blown away. And I don't have any um, insulation in the car, but we have a guy uh, coming back here tomorrow, so I'm gonna, call him and ask him just to basically um, tape that up for me with the uh, with some insulation um, but that is all for this video